like instead of hard coding, like I want this to go 10 times, I want this to go five times. Well, first I need a scanner. So I can read the input. Um, let's ask them for a count of how many times they want to run this thing and let's grab it. Okay, so now usually I have this thing like that. Um, so how do I make this work with what they gave me? Well, I have a couple options. So I can take the number they gave me and I can put it right here. So let's make sure that this goes the right number of times. Let's see. Oops. Okay, I can click this. Let's go three. One, two, three times it ran. Okay, cool. Um, another option. If you don't care if it goes forwards or backwards, you just care about the total number of times, um, I can count down from what they gave me. Oops. Let's just verify this goes the correct number of iterations again. Four. Yep, there's four outputs so this must have run four times um, when I'm counting down I can I can do another weird thing like I can I can sort of use this variable as my control variable if I want and here's what that looks like it's a little bit weird so I can literally just leave this off entirely I still put the semicolon and I just use this variable as my control um, so let's see what that looks like Three, two, one. There it is. Um, so I can use this um, and just let it be the control variable. Okay. What if I wanted to? I'm going to put this back the way it was. Actually, what if I want to count from one number to another? What would that look like? Um, so let's say, let's change this. Let's call this start. Let me call that start. And then let's ask them and. And um, so maybe I want to run from this to this. How does that look like? Well, my loop control could start here and it could go if I wanted to include the end up to it. And then it should scroll between those two numbers. Let's see. Let's start at five and go to nine. Yep, there they are. Okay, so those are some different ways you can use user input to control the loop that's happening.